So I'm Brandon with Whiskey River Trading. This is my dad, Craig Roost, of admin of Axe Junkies. Daryl Groot just joined us. Hey, Tells us low. Um, and he is a designer and employee of Council Tool. So we're going to be talking about some of the new products that we're offering and some of the aspects of them that come into play for making them better and more of a modern tool. So let's start with the ones that are right here. Okay. We've got the Hudson Bay, which is a two pound head that we just released a couple months ago, right here. And there's been some chit chat about its new design and how it's different than previous Hudson Bays. So you can tell that the overall head is shorter, but the eye section is taller. You can see here, this is the old style, that the more tomahawk looking Hudson Bay. And this section is shorter than right here. And so you've got more handle in this than you do inside of here, which allows it to stay fit uh, to the handle better and eases with, uh, I guess, that the head coming loose if you're using it for heavy tasks. Another advantage of this over the old style is this one did not have a hardened pole. And if you look at the back, the overall size of it is a lot smaller than the new one. So this has a hardened pole on the new design, which allows it to be used for striking steel. So that is super helpful for people who do trapping and camp part like camping, tent setting tent stakes and such. So yeah, it's for guys who don't want to, who are concerned about damaging their axe. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, if you do want to use it in a pinch as a hammer, uh, whether it's uh, drive a spike, uh, like a landscaping spike, or even nails, or <laughs> I use the, the uh, analogy or the example of releasing a frozen hitch on the truck. Um, if it's raining and it's snowing and you need to get that truck hooked up and it's frozen shut, you know, just give it a tap with your axe. You don't have to, be, you don't have to worry about uh, yeah. damaging it or, or abusing it that way. So, right. uh, But the trappers, I'm hoping the trappers are really going to gravitate this to more of a traditional uh, tool. Um, I'm sure there's advantages. Of, everyone's got their own tool they use to to set stakes for trap sets, but mm -hmm. to have a an axe that's basically built, uh, designed for that, um, and the fact that it makes a better splitter now. Uh, moving that steel around to make a taller eye, more of a wedge shape, um, doesn't give you as long a blade, but it gives you a better, um, it gives you a better wedge shape for, uh, for, for splitting. Seeing as most people who use these axes are using them to camp, um, to split firewood that they either got, you know, from home or even at the at the gas station on the way to the park or the campsite. Mm -hmm. So since most people are using them as splitters, uh, we decided to change the design to make it a better splitter uh, so people aren't struggling with it. And uh, the design itself actually has a, uh, a throwback to their earlier days of Hudson Bay, one of the variations of the Hudson Bay, uh, the back when uh, Ella Bean was producing them that way. So it's kind of like an old school throwback design that we brought back. So, yeah, I think it's worth mentioning that the one of the f huge flaws that I saw as a retailer, and, and he probably saw it as a uh, guy working in designing tools, is that this one kept I kept having issues with customers emailing after they took it to camp and were splitting firewood, and they're like, "Hey, the head came loose." And just basic physics says the more handle that you have inside the eye of your axe, the firmer the fit and the stronger the fit. Uh, that that resistance inside the, the eye is really important if you're gonna be doing heavy tasks like splitting. So if you're using your normal hatchet, you're never gonna really run into that uh, small, you know, pound and a quarter to two pound head. But with these Hudson Bays, since they do come on an 18 and a 24 inch handle, they oftentimes uh, folks wanna use them for splitting tasks, which is not really what it was made for. You know, this. Tomahawk style was more of a canoe axe, something that you would have at camp to make kindling yep. uh, and harvest stuff to start a fire, not necessarily be splitting huge, huge rounds. So the the new one comes on a 18 and a 24 inch handle. Uh, and yeah, I think that he touched on it. One huge advantage of this product is having the hardened pull is we've all been somewhere where we're like, man, I wish I had a hammer. 
uh, I don't have my framing hammer with or I don't have a sledge, this is a two pound, this can be treated like a two pound hammer right. for uh, loosening stuff or, or whatever. You, you're not gonna like build a deck with this Steve and Rodney Price, right. call out to you. Uh, but, um, but you will, um, but you can use it uh, in, a, in a pinch if you, if you need as a hammer. So sure. yeah. And uh, they, they swing like two completely different axes we all know that handle length comes into play a lot when it, when designs are, uh, or when you're picking out a handle for an axe. You know, if you hang a, a handle on a different hand, uh, an axe on a different handle, it becomes a totally different tool. Mm -hmm. And this is the perfect example of that. If you wanted to go ahead and hang this on a 28 inch handle, you could. They, it has a standard boys axe eye, so a 28 inch boys, most 24, 28 inch boys axe handles are going to fit this axe. Right. Yeah. Right. So this comes with a, well this is the new design uh, veg tan mask. This is similar to the chocolate brown one that we actually same in shape as the chocolate brown one we offered um, with the Forest Service Axe release, the reissue, and this fits the Hudson Bay. So you can check these out. We've got these available on Whiskey River's site and it snap goes underneath the head, locks it in, and this mask is pretty neat because if you are using this as a striking tool uh, as far as um, using it like a hammer you can have this mask still on it so it's coming if it's coming in close to your body this adds protection protects you from the bit um, or the bit from hitting anything else right. so. the one thing that I would mention though is you know people are going to say well the, the rivets are going to touch the bit and you're going to dull the bit and that, the rivets are soft, um, but the one thing that I would worry about is if you are going to use it for extended use, that inertial energy coming down is going to force that mass down to the point where you actually may cut the rivet or cut the mass. So it's not meant for, you know, to be using it long term, um, but most people aren't swinging it at their face when they're striking. Mm -hmm. They're usually over the shoulder, so most people won't have a, a problem using it without a mask. Correct. As a striking yep. tool. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, like any mask, it's it's mainly to protect the tool from hitting things when it's in your toolbox or it's in the back of your truck, underneath the seat, or protecting you from getting sliced from that tool. So uh, these these Hudson Hudson Bay medium masks fit really well. You can tell it covers the whole bit, comes in really far, and uh, buckles underneath the head so it's not coming off in any way. So it fits the other ones too. and yeah, it fits the Flying Fox and the Boys Axe, uh, and it, it does fit the old style Hudson Bay. Which is I'm not sure if it's going to fit that that wide. Oh, well, maybe not. Let's try, Let's try it. it. Let's try yeah. it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Now, why the the longer blade on the old style was uh, significantly longer? And uh, yeah, ah, yeah, I misspoke. It does not fit. Yeah. No. That's what I'm here for, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's not. It's, it's not going to go. Yeah. So it does not fit that, but it does fit the new style Very really well. well. It just goes on straight like this, and it's kind of tacoed over here. You can see. So if you, as you're putting it on the axe, you can squeeze here and it actually makes it a little bit longer and just slides straight on like that. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's the new Hudson Bay. These retail on the website. Um, they have two different prices. I think it's 65 and 70. Uh, don't quote me on that, but they are both available in the standard axe section. They're 1060 steel. User sharp, out of the box, hung proud, poplar wedge, just like all of the sport utility line finish stuff. And they have a thin coat of wax on the handle that you can easily scrape off and switch out for whatever finish you like on, on your handles. So that's the new Hudson Bay. Now we're gonna go to the latest new product that Council Tools offered, and that is the five pound head on two different length handles. So, let's see here, this is the uh, five pound on a 36 inch straight handle, and this is the five pound on a 28 inch straight, inch straight handle. They're the same head, uh, one's painted, the Faller's Axe, the red one is painted, and the Sport Utility Line Splitter is unpainted and raw finished, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to let him talk about kind of the, some design aspects of the advantages of this. Sure. Too. So um, forging dies wear out over so many impressions or any, so many units that we produce. Um, and the 
the tool itself starts to grow a little bit just from the, the steel being dished out as it's being forged into those dies. So when those dies come up for resync, because they're, the die blocks are thick, um, when they come up for resync after so many impressions, uh, it gives us a chance to tweak the design a little bit. And the existing or the older five pounder was, you know, blade heavy because it was more designed um, after felling axes for a felling bit as opposed to a faller's axe, which is almost used more like a sledgehammer. So because most of our five pounders were being used as faller axes and some guys were trying to split with them, um, we decided to, if we're going to resync it, let's redesign it so that one, it is, makes a better balanced faller's axe. And you can see if I pull like this, it'll rotate backwards to flat, which means that when you're swinging it sideways, one handed, there's no blade drop. You're not fighting it, especially if you're trying to go around the tree to, to drive that wedge. Um, and being flat or being well or ba better balanced, it, when you strike, your accuracy is improved that way. You're not fighting the blade, you're not trying to steer it through the air where it basically will lay pretty much flat in your hand. Um, and then with that, the pole is longer because of that balance. Uh, and then that striking surface is now a lot more significant so that when you're striking a plastic felling wedge, uh, your accuracy doesn't have to be that that great, especially if you're taking a really big swing on it. Um, and then we did chamfer the corners on it, um, partly because obviously the raft, the old rafting axes have got chamfered corners. It's a design element that a lot of guys like, it's cool. Um, but also from the faller side, that chamfered corner then uh, doesn't damage the, the hard plastic um, wedges as easy. So if you end up hitting that on the corner, you're not taking a chunk out of your wedge. So that just kind of makes it a little bit more um, gear friendly when it comes to the fallers, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but with that balance, we decided to make it more of a wedge shape with a high center line. So it's, it's wedged down the center line um, as a wedge pattern, okay? Up through, pass through the eye. But that high center line then allows it to release a little better once you do get it in if you're gonna be splitting. So again, with that, with that balance, and you're coming down, you can steer and control the ax better if it's balanced. And then uh, the hardened pole actually acts like a counterweight if you wanted to go ahead and do a flick technique, the old uh, Tom Clark buster thing. Mm -hmm. So you can flick split with this because of that counterbalance on the back side. And even this one is, is balanced. So there's no blade drop, it likes to lay flat. So Yeah, those are some good aspects of the tool. The uh, a lot of folks that were swinging the Dayton style pattern felling axe uh, as a faller's axe did complain about the striking surface being less than desirable when it uh, came to banging wedges. So uh, I'm super excited to offer both of these on the site. They both retail for 70 bucks. They are hickory, they're standard handles. Uh, they have, again, a thin coat of wax on them, which can be easily scraped off with a card scraper or a knife. and they have um, they have a nice palm swell too. Yeah, yeah. We redesigned the handles as well. I don't know if you sure can see that, but now there is a nice taper to it, straight. Uh, that that is in your hand, and it's it's not going to come out. Yeah. So that that good grip or that good you know purchase on there, um, that that feeling then talks to your brain and says this handle is not going to come out of my hand. So now I can swing a little bit harder. Mm -hmm and not be afraid that it's gonna come out of my hand, especially in wet conditions or, you know, if you're wearing gloves or anything like that. So that's another thing that we decided on both of these is that the, the, the grips or the palm swell on them are a lot nicer. Um, yeah. And this gives you more confidence in swinging. Yeah, it is worth mentioning that this handle is a little bit thicker than the splitting handle. So if you own one or the other, um, this being a faller's tool is getting beat up a lot, dropped, stepped on, stepped on, possibly run over. So uh, that's not something that you're usually going to do with your splitting axe. So that's, um, but everybody loves a thin handle. Look at that thing. So um, no grain guarantee on either of these because they are standard handles, but they have, um, they are very nicely shaped. Yep. So one and thing, waxed. and waxed, yep. So this is our large veg tan mask, and this fits on both of these. Uh, and again, over the back, 
or underneath the back of the pole, along the shoulder there, and then you've got good coverage. So you can see that, that there. So those are the, the two new axes that we just recently released in 2022. Um, I wish I had a straight handled flying fox here, but I don't, uh, I left it at home. So, cause we only have one left and it's mine. Uh, <laughs> I would say that, oh, we can show them the new stamp on the um, sure, premium one. Yeah. So while he's doing that, um, one thing to mention about the, the new five pounder is that even though the red one is on a shorter handle that's basically um, geared towards the faller's ax and the longer one, which is the sport utility finish head on a longer handle, is more of a splitting tool. There's no reason why they can't switch over and be used, you know, you know, crossover really easy. Like if you want to do more accurate splitting with a shorter one, and you and you've got the technique where you can use a shorter axe to split with, that's a good option. If all you have is this longer one and you need to drive wedges on a bigger tree, there's no reason why you can't use it as well. So even though they're they're set up and designed for two specific markets, I guess we'll call it. Um, there's no reason why they can't cross over in a pinch. Uh, I actually like to use the shorter handle for splitting if I've got smaller smaller rounds that I'm trying to target because the smaller the target, um, the closer you are to the handle, the more accurate you are. So your smaller target, you can you'd hit it easier. So I actually use both the shorter version and the longer version for splitting, depending on the application. Now, yeah. granted, you could have it's not going to split everything. I'll be honest. There's a hundred different variables when it comes to splitting. There's a hundred different types of axes for splitting. Mm -hmm. So this is just one one good option that's going to cover a lot of those bases, check a lot of those boxes for guys that want to split with an axe and not with a splitting wall uh, or a hydraulic splitter. Yeah. Um, and I know that Dalton, who runs uh, Whiskey River's official council tool dealer page on Instagram, has split with both. Uh, and he he really enjoys uh, switching it up back and forth. Uh, they swing like two two completely different axes, and they're kind of they kind of perform two different tool uh, two different jobs. So sure. yeah, one last thing. Um, we have a number of axes that we came out with that have hardened poles. Most of those are small. They are the two pound pack axe, the camp carver, and the flying fox, and now the new two pound Hudson Bay. All of those are smaller axes, and they have hardened poles. This larger one does not have a hardened pole. It is not a true rafting axe. Even though it has some similar design aspects to it, it's not a, a rafting axe, which was used to drive steel dogs to hook chains for making yeah, rafts for logs. logs down the river, okay? Yeah. This is not that tool, which means that there is, it does not have a hardened pole. And one of the reasons being is the there is not a large demand in the market for a hardened pole axe of this size. Because if you did harden it, then guys are going to be trying to use it to drive splitting wedges. Mm -hmm. And the eye wall is not thick enough to handle that. Okay, yeah. Or they're going to strike the back of it with another hardened tool. And then you've got hard on hard, which the chances of hardened shrapnel coming off and hurting somebody is you know, greatly increased that way. So sure. we did not harden the poles on these for a number of reasons. And... Uh, I'm going to say that 99% of everyone out there is not going to have a problem with driving plastic felling wedges with a with this axe, and it does not need a hardened pole. So yeah, I mean one of the one of the top uh, why I'm super excited about this this axe is one of our top questions in my email inbox is is what is a good splitting axe? What's a good splitting axe that you guys offer? And obviously, there's been axes that you can use as splitting axes. Right, uh, the three and a half pound jersey on a straight handle is kind of that mm -hmm. fit that mold, but that's still a pretty light axe in comparison to what most people are using uh, as splitting malls. You know, like the six average, or eight yeah, six and eight pound splitting mall is pretty standard. So this five pound is a great alternative to if you want a heavy, uh, a heavy splitting axe. Uh, this is something that I haven't been able to offer yet. Uh, that perfect splitting axe yet, and this is this is getting really close to that, and I think that you guys will really enjoy them. And I know the folks that have picked them up so far have been raving about how how great they are at their wood pile. So, uh, if you guys have any questions about these, uh, drop them in the comments right now. I'm seeing Steve Malvey's complimenting your chops that they're looking oh. better. So <laughs> Steve's joining us. 
Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's talk about, well, since we're on the splitting topic, let's actually talk about the FE6. So we were just talking about a six pound mall being a great option. Uh, this is the forcible entry six, six pound from Council Tool. Uh, this has that kind of wedge, super wedgy profile. Uh, you can see here that there is relief for it to marry to a Halligan tool. This is a fort, this is a fire ax, uh, and it comes on a 32 and 36 inch handle. This is 4140 steel versus the 1060, 1060 that's on the standard line. So uh, this is a great splitting option. This also is balanced great with this pole that sticks off the back and allows for you to have that extra pound if you're looking for that if you if you're you wanting the, yeah. the size this way is very similar yeah but when you go this way you can see that one is a lot thicker yeah you got this extra pound hanging out in here yeah so it yeah. doesn't take much steel to make up a pound yeah uh yeah it's uh this is great we got brian here asking what do we use to coat the handle with the factory uh, these are factory coated with a very thin coat of wax which can be scraped off. You can put on your own wax, Whiskey River sells Axe, wax, camp wax, and then also there is boiled linseed oil, linseed which oil. has been kind of a go-to for everybody. And uh, for, for splitters, I actually recommend um, staying with wax because if, if you split like I do, it's all year round and even in the winter in the north, which means that I'm gonna be splitting when there's an inch four inches, 10 inches, 12 inches snow on the ground, which means this ax will be wet. It'll get wet. Yeah. Um, you, you can use boiling seed oil, one boiling seed oil will protect it. But what I like to do is for my splitters is to use the camp wax and then just keep applying it as I need to, because then the water beads off of it and it never really gets into it. Like, like boiling seed oil, you, after a while being soaked in water, We'll start to you'll start to feel the grain on it yeah and then now you got to sand that down where so far i really haven't had that problem with the with the wax so mm -hmm. for splitters that see a lot of weather yeah. as opposed to like a bushcrafter's axe that maybe stays in a pack or a duffel bag and only comes out when you're when you're using it mm -hmm. whereas this thing may live outside it may live in the garage i've got a uh, i've got a, a sears escargot uh, yeah, car, car hauler car, that car, keep it in there yeah. so it sees all different types of moisture but uh, yeah I would recommend just keep waxing it yeah and one one thing that a lot of folks don't like about wax is that it, it causes blisters but if you're using these as a splitter oftentimes it's being used at least here in Wisconsin we're using these in cold temps where you're gonna have gloves on anyway and you're not gonna have blisters from it so the, the wax is really there to protect the handle from the moisture that will cause it to crack and when it has this humidity jump and then back down back and forth that's just really hard on on any wood uh, you wouldn't want to leave a dresser sit outside in the snow uh, why would you you know leave a tool handle out that that's actually under a lot more force than a piece of furniture so yep. um, now varnish obviously is the is the worst for for blisters mm -hmm. um, I'd actually say that wax is a little bit halfway between the the varnish and the boiling seed oil boiling seed oil allows the handle to slip through your hands but still grippy enough to, so it's not going to get out of control mm -hmm. but honestly I split mostly barehanded even in the winter just so I've got better control and I have I have yet to get a, a blister from from waxed handle yeah for sure yeah me so. neither I mean yeah it's like sticky handles are a thing uh, and any tool that you're going to use right. uh, and but this FE6 is a great option if you want just that extra pound for splitting. Uh, if that if that's if that means a lot to you, like specifically if you're used to swinging a six pound mall uh, or an eight pound mall, uh, this is the axe version of that. It's designed for fire departments to literally beat things open, which is uh, really what you're doing when you're right. splitting firewood apart. You're just trying to break stuff. Right. So plus, it's kind of cool to split firewood with a fire axe. Yeah, that's true. Um, Johnny Axman says that he got to bust up a spruce this morning. Okay, yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, thanks for the support, man. Uh, Nathan Elliott says we need to do this more often. Well, <laughs> here's the funny thing is that uh, it seems like Brandon and I, the only time we really get together is when we're both going to the same yeah, event. event. Yeah, yeah. We and don't then, we don't live near each other, so that right. that is not conducive for doing this. But we'll try to do it more. 
So sure. and Nathan Elliott runs Out of the Woods. Uh, oh sure, hey Nathan Elliott. Yeah, Elliot. on YouTube. Uh, ben, very light coating of soft wax or non-drying oil over hard wax, like on the factory handle finish, does a nice job of reducing the tack if needed. Sure, that's that makes uh, sense. yeah. Yep. So and Ben's from Maine, so he would know. It's very cold up there, just like here in Wisconsin. So uh, thanks, Ben, for that, that tip. Uh, yeah, if you guys have any more questions on these or you want to see anything else, let us know. One one advantage of this FE6 that is not really known and I haven't done any content on, uh, I think it's worth mentioning, is this is hung flush. You can see it's not hung proud. Unlike this one, which is hung proud, it sticks out about an eighth of an inch, a little bit more. Uh, this has is machined out in the inside here and it has a lip. So it's in countersunk. Countersunk, yeah. So where the wood is actually expanding and that's what the advantage of it being hung crowd is expanding over the top it's actually doing that inside of this eye there's a little shelf in there and that that allows that handle to spread out and kind of adds that little bit of peace of mind that the head's actually being held on better right and the idea is that we want the top flat on a force entry so as you strike yeah. a door head on right across the spine yeah. that you're not driving the handle back through the eye right so this is technically a hung proud trimmed flush fire axe yeah and it's like used uh, for i'm not a fireman neither is he but in the firemen when firemen are doing their jobs they're using this kind of as a battling ram at certain points you're not always able to like swing this like a like a sledgehammer and so in tight quarters hitting it like this and if you had that hung proud it would actually hit the handle first and drive the head off and you wouldn't want that because your uh, your axe would fall apart inside of a burning house so not to say uh, not a positive aspect to, to the tool so this comes on a 32 and 36 inch uh, handle 85 bucks on the website roughly and uh, they're in the standard axe section and the fire axe section and they come user sharp out of the box ready to go and that that large mask that we showed you on the five pound also fits that yeah Yep, which is pretty cool. The um, and one thing too is you know I don't know if you're giving out permission slips to own more than one axe today, <laughs> but I I run a an FE6, a five pound on a three quart, on a thirty six, and the five pound on a twenty eight, including uh, at least one or two splitting malls, and uh, you know basically a small Hudson Bay on my scabbard when I'm splitting. So I've got different options, especially if I want to come at a log from both sides. I, if I got a crack started, I just leave that in there and come on the other side and open it up. And having more than one axe while you're splitting is something I would never go back from. I mean, yeah, I would always uh, yeah, recommend sure. having more than one tool while you're splitting. Yeah, so. I mean, it'd be argued that you don't go into the woods with only one chainsaw because that'll ruin your day. Or if you only go in with one chainsaw, you're going to have a tool there to get it out, some wedges and a, and a sledge or a, an axe. So it's the same kind of principle at the splitting pile to get things loosened up. He touched on the um, permission slip thing. That's uh, something that also I have not talked about much. If you if you need a hand signed permission slip from us, from me, that says that you that you can own more than one axe. So if you have someone in your life, it's like, man, why uh, do yeah, why one? do you need more than one axe or why do you need so many axes? Just put a note section in the note section on your order on whiskeyriverchain.com and I've got this typed up form. It's official. That, yeah, it's official permission slip for you. Uh, our customer so that's free of charge you don't have to add that um, to your cart or anything just put it in the notes section. fold it up in your wallet yeah so yeah yeah for anybody you know if somebody some guy's walking past like your neighbors walking past is like hey man what do you need all this access for it's like I, I got this permission slip I am allowed <laughs> to do it <laughs> so uh, the another update from council which is a a cool change that uh, I'm excited about is this this new stamp or this new laser edged yeah it's it's reversed on this camera you're gonna see it up here it's it's a uh, crossed axis it's their their crossed axe logo I guess mm -hmm. um, so they're going away from the woodcraft uh, slash velvet cut differentiation on this on the handles um, and so this the is only line. premiums that yeah. will be marked like yeah this. these are only the premium axe line this is the camp carver if you're not familiar with it this is a 16 inch handle 5160 sharp out the box beveled spine 90 degrees so you can strike a ferro rod like you said previously hardened pull so you can 5160 use, yeah 5160 steel 
Um, and then this handle is not coated in anything uh, besides a thin coat of oil. So there's no wax on this, no lacquer, and again, hung proud, poplar wedge. And it comes with leather uh, factory, um, which is pretty cool. And it comes with a little booklet on the history of council tool in a box. Tool, in a box, box. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So there's added tool. value. There's added value to the product um, when when you get it, as opposed to just the axe itself. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this also has an upgrade option on the site, which is a full carry system, which is uh, a full mask. I'm going to grab it right now and show you. So while he's going, I'm going to get that. Um, one of the reasons that we went to um, one mark for both of our uh, premium lines is so that when you do buy a handle, it, it will match. It doesn't have to match. So if you have a, a boys, like if you have a pack axe, but you only have a velvet cut uh, handle available to you, then that kind of an odd, you know, it's odd of mix where now all the handles are interchangeable between the the both the premium, the velvet cut, and the woodcraft. Right. So each of them have just one mark on. So the simplify premium, the process that premium way. Hudson Bay, which is the velvet cut Hudson Bay, mm -hmm. has the same handle as a pack axe. So to come, what? To come. To come. Yeah, the, the next the next premium Hudson Bay, and so that keeps the differentiation away of being like, wow, they only have. You know, velvet cut handles available, but I've got a woodcraft pack axe, so it's now it's it's that. Uh, you can just buy one handle, it can be done, and replace it and get back into it. So this is the this is the full leather sheath. Slides in from the top like this, drops down like that, and snaps over the top. I got morning hands today. <laughs> there we go. So that, it's got two D-rings on each side, which is pretty neat, which allows you to click a lanyard on it, uh, or a sling. sling. The sling has these slits in it at various lengths, so the sling can be used for any other axe that has D-rings attached to a, a sheath. Uh, yeah, you can put it on. Uh, it also, this also has a uh, belt loop where you can put your belt through the um, through the sheath or webbing of a backpack. You know, a lot of guys are putting these on the backs on the outside of their backpack. I'm gonna tighten this down a little bit so that you can wear it right away. So you can put it on your body without it slipping down. Yeah, if you guys got any questions, shoot them over. I'd love to hear them. You can kind of answer them. You may have to scroll yeah, through Brian and says, no, Brian says, thanks, guys. Awesome tool on the. He was the one that asked about the handle coating. So there you go. It's this, right? Kind of yep. see it there. Hangs low. You can adjust it up if you want, down, and uh, otherwise, yeah, you can store it. Hang your tool like this. Hang it like this in the shop. And then it's basically, to, you can wear it, and it'll come out by just popping it, and then. It'll slide all the way out of the, the sling and the sheath itself. Yeah. So you don't have to so take off the still, sheath. Yeah, this you is still attached. Pull it off of you. Yep, exactly. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, these are available on the site now, which is which I'm super excited about because we have not had camp carpers in stock for a few months. So if you guys are looking for a gift for your friends, family, yourself, this is... Uh, this is a good one. And take care of yourself. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you gotta make, gotta make sure you're happy. Perfect gift. So, I let's see what else. Uh, council tool wise, I think that's pretty much it uh, as far as new stuff that's came out. We've got a straight handled version of the Flying Fox uh, that dropped a few weeks ago, uh, about a month ago, and they sold out right away. But we're looking to. We're going to be getting another shipment in hopefully before the end of the year and that's a 21 inch straight handle measures out at and uh it swings like a completely different tool than the flying fox yeah you get so, two hands on it yep good yep and kind of utilizes the design aspects of that handle to being able to be used as a lightweight trapper hatchet mm -hmm. which is pretty cool um hey look cameron council's watching us oh hey cameron, cameron. nice to see you uh, so, so yeah, I your name. Yeah, nice to your name. House. yeah, look at that. Um, but uh, so yeah, we're doing that bunch of giveaways any day today, which is Black Friday. Special offer is if you order more than two hundred dollars on the website, you get a free flying fox thrown in the box. You don't have to do anything. 
if your order's over 200, it ships with a free flying fox. So um, yeah, I'm gonna give you guys a couple minutes to ask some questions if you have them. If not, we're gonna call it and yeah, thanks for joining us. So let the questions hit if you've got one. Yeah, yeah on behalf of uh, obviously everybody at Council Tool, all the operators, the management, uh, suppliers, stuff like that, uh, we hope everyone has a, a great ha Thanksgiving season and obviously holiday season. Yeah. And uh, just check in with each other, you know, um, be the be the person that be the friend that you wish you had to somebody else. Yeah. And uh, we appreciate all the support. Uh, we know that uh, our lead times are long right now for our dealers. It's a perfect storm between uh, very very high demand and uh, you know our production. You know we can only make so many quality tools at at one time. And we make over 120 different tools, uh, so it's not just axes that we make. And uh, so we're we're trying our hardest to try and get back into uh, um, you know trying to get that that uh, backlog taken care of um, but it doesn't seem like it's slowing down any I, mean, I don't no. know if you're from your no, side I mean, but it's the yeah. market is still going strong yeah I mean there's all this we're like hot and heavy into the firewood season right now so we're we've got all of these fire axes or uh, firewood splitting axes in stock and they're they're flying off the shelf guys are getting gear together for springtime you know for camping season so we're in the heat of that obviously it's christmas and there's these sales christmas Black money Friday. Spend. yeah exactly grandma sending you money yeah, yeah yeah we we take grandma we definitely uh trade grandma's money for axes <laughs> around here so um yeah hey hey daryl thanks for the happy holiday wishes um and supply in for any product that we offer right now is, is low at Whiskey River site, so it's not just council tool that is slow with getting things. If you've been living under a rock, I guess you would uh, be confused on why supply issues are, are low, but we have everything that is sold out on the website is on order and on its way to us, whether that's on its way tomorrow or it's on its way in six months or who knows when, but we are actively working on uh, making our supply chain uh, issues smaller and speeding up these lead times for us getting stuff on the website. Right. The best thing to do on for for Whiskey River is to sign up for the newsletter. We keep our newsletter subscribers up to date and it's kind of a thank you to them by allowing them to get first dibs on products. So if anybody's out there being like, wow, I haven't, Whiskey River never has that in stock. I never know when they have stuff in stock. It's like, that's that's the avenue we treat them it's a gateway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We we let them have first dibs, and oftentimes the product hits the website. Newsletter subscribers get it right away, and um, and that's kind of our thank you to them for listening to my ramblings on the email. So, yeah. All right. Well, I think that's it. Sounds good. Brandon Roos with Whiskey River Trading. I'm Rooster with Council Tool. Yeah. Be good, guys.